This conference will now be recorded. Okay, you're good to go. This is the advanced group for uh, the 11th of, uh, of May, correct? 11th of May. Um, Len is in transit tonight. He's uh, in transit between Florida and, and his home in Connecticut. So he won't be joining us tonight. Um, but uh, he will, he, otherwise he would have been here. So um, the new ones are this are Felice Baldi. If you can hear us, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Can you hear us and, and do you want to participate? If not, we'll move on to some of the others that want to speak. Okay. Uh, okay. Carl, go ahead. You're up. Oh, thank you. <coughs> no new people today? Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. One, but they, we can't hear them yet. Go okay. ahead. Um, updates. So the last we talked, I was on a trial of Wild Cornell, ARV 110 medication. Uh, at the end of eight weeks, having taken the daily um, pill, three pills a day, and I had scans, I had uh, blood tests, um, CAT scan of the abdomen, pelvis, and um, chest, as well as uh, nuclear medicine bone scan. The results of the scans uh, indicated that the drug was not working, and uh, Dr. Tagawa said, we have to take you off the trial. So um, since that time, uh, yesterday, I actually had a telemed appointment with my main oncologist at uh, Rutgers, the Soraya, and we had a pretty lengthy discussion as far as the available options uh, that I have going forward. And there are numerous um, options available to me at this point. Uh, what I was um, comforted by is that uh, Dr. Tagawa had reached out to Dr. Soraya and actually Dr. Stein at Columbia. <laughs> uh, so the consensus, uh, I have a consensus among the three uh, oncologists of what I should be considering as my next step. I have an appointment scheduled for June 1st with Dr. Tagawa. Um, in, in between now and then, which is only about, what, three weeks, uh, there, there's nothing that uh, we need to rush into now to have some type of medication, whether it be chemo, radiation, um, some other um, standard of care options. And uh, Dr. Tagawa has offered several trials that I would qualify for. Uh, the one that appears to be the most, um, uh, the consensus has uh, agreed that there is a new trial starting shortly. Um, there's no information yet. I actually wrote to Tagawa and said, can you please at least send me some information on this trial? He hasn't yet done that, but it's a, a triple uh, therapy. It includes uh, actinium-225, which is a PSMA-related therapy. It includes enzalutamide, and it includes Keytruda. So I have no further details as far as how it's going to be implemented. Uh, you may be able to tell me if it's an actual, uh, I guess it's a combination of infusions or if it's something, an oral medication, but um, I will have clearer information as of June 1st. So between now and June 1st, it's kind of holding steady un until I have that appointment. Hey, and you're feeling okay? Yeah, I mean, I, right, and that was, that was, Clearly, the key question from Dr. Soraya, the oncologist, is, well, how are you feeling? And, uh, you know, I do have a lesion in the uh, soft tissue by the seventh rib the back. Uh, that was determined to have been growing uh, as a result of that eight weeks with, with the, uh, uh, the CAT scan. 
it's grown by about 20% uh, mm. since the beginning of the trial. And uh, But I have no back pain. And uh, so Dr. Soraya says, well, you know, we really don't need to address anything in particular unless you do have effects or you're not feeling uh, uh, well. And I am feeling fairly well. So we can uh, realistically wait until June to have that appointment. Okay, very good. I'm happy to hear that. We'll, we'll keep you, keep you so on the Carl, list. What were the other? I mean, what what were the other options, and are any of them conventional? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, uh, not from Tagawa. Tagawa is, I guess, specifically he he focuses yeah, on he all needs, his trials. Yeah, because he's got to write publications. That's right. his motivation. I'm right. not sure that his motivation is to take care of you. Well, I guess. Uh, that, that's a thought, <laughs> uh, and that's why I do have two other oncologists who have weighed in on uh, what I should be considering. Uh, we, so talked about, is, we talked so about um, we, we talked about carboplatin. We talked about uh, uh, combination with azotaxel, which Peter uh, had done recently, and um, you know, kitchen by itself. But I said, well, I don't know if that's I'm a viable candidate for that by itself, but in combination, it should be that much more effective. And uh, so, as I said, my my main oncologist at Rutgers, well, we should not really move forward with anything yet until we do uh, see what is going to happen with the Tagawa trial. Okay. Well, I think it's I think it's good that you've got several several bright minds looking at it together. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if anyone can tell me enzalutamide. I'm not. I've I've heard of it. I've read about it. But is it a oral medication or is it something else? It's oral, but Carl, it's a, it's That's a, Xtandi, Carl. You know, it's, Xtandi. Right. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Jake, Jake, Jake's well informed. Okay. Uh, let's go, no, Carl. Jake. Peter, hold on. Okay. Let's go back to let's go back to Herb, and allow Herb to finish. Go ahead, Herb. Well, I mean, I'm just thinking clinical trials are great when you've run out of options and you're there, you want to move to untested therapies. It seems to me that you have an option, at least one, which is a, which is tested and true, right? Which is chemo. Is there a reason you won't do it? No, that, that uh, you know, I, I, I... I think after having multiple discussions here and with Rick directly, it it is an option for me. Uh, it, it, I I'm not saying I will not do it. It is definitely an option for me. And I had a, a substantive discussion with uh, Soraya at this point, and he he clearly said, and in conjunction, as I said, with the other two, well, let's leave out uh, Tagawa, but with uh, Stein at Columbia Presbyterian, they agreed that this is what we should look at right now. What is? Uh, the, the trial, yeah, right. the so, trial, right. right. So I I hear that, but I'm 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 very concerned, Carl. That that's because they're hearing what you're saying. And let me just let me just go back. We we didn't think ARV one ten was a great idea. Um, and the reasons we said so were because we felt um, that the reason your disease grows, the cancer cells split and multiply, is because you have a um, you have a mutation in the BRCA gene. Um, and that's what's driving the cancer as opposed to the testosterone feeding the cancer. Um, and when we start talking about enzalutamide, that's another androgen receptor drug. So um, the actinium is a radionuclide. I don't, want to eat um, I don't know what it's going to be associated with, probably PSMA. So yes. we'd need to know whether you express PSMA or not. And the immunotherapy um you know what they're trying to do is they're trying to make those that that tumor of yours 
a hot tumor rather than a cold tumor, so the, the T cells will be attracted to it. And all of those things um, are very speculative. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of them, but if I were in your shoes and I knew that carboplatin had been proven to be effective in treating my mutation, because it's been used in other candidates, I, uh, in, other, uh, in other prospects, I would really be saying, well, why don't we do something that's proven rather than going through another four weeks or eight weeks? Because sooner or later, what's going to happen is you're not going to be strong enough to do the to to do to do the chemo. We don't want to see that. We just don't want to see it. And I think what Herb is saying, and if you took, I mean, there's a lot of guys. How many guys? Put your hand up, and if your if your picture is on, and if your picture isn't on, put your picture on. How many how many guys on this call have gone through chemo? Oh, keep, 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 keep your, keep your hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can see seven. There may be more. You got Ken who doesn't have a picture. We got Ken who doesn't have a picture. Eight. So what I'm trying to say to you is this. Nobody wants to do chemo. But what we know about the chemotherapy, in your case, carboplat a, carb a platin-based chemotherapy, probably in combination with a, with a taxane, is that it works. And I think my question, we're not saying, we're not recommending you do it, but I think the question you owe yourself to ask both Stein and um, Zaria. Zaria is which of the two treatments is gonna have, is likely to have the better impact. Okay. And if, if, if they say, well, we can't tell you about the trial, but we know that, you know, there's this likelihood that you'll respond to the carbo pattern, then you've got to make your decision, decision based on that because we can keep going. Your MO has been to keep looking for trials. And, and that's, I think, what everybody's questioning on this call. Why are we pushing you like this? Because we love you. We don't want to see you go away. And what we've seen is men who put off chemo sometimes it's too late for them to bring it back. And we want you to do the chemo whilst you're healthy and you've got the ability to cope with it. I mean, it, chemo is the first line therapy call, right? So, speaking for myself, chemo was not that bad. Well, I mean, it's well, not fun, for, but it's not that me, bad. It was no fun. I, you know, I didn't get through all six sessions, but still, it knocked the hell out of my PSA. Right, Herb. I, I have a question that, you know, just informational. Is carboplatin officially approved for prostate cancer? I, I think I'm they use sure. it because it's been effective for women in different cancers. Right. But uh, so they, but it's so it's off label, isn't it? So it's it's not a proven therapy for men with prostate cancer. I, but it but it's often used because of the fact that it seems to have a a good uh, a good track record with with um, BRCA mutations. Yes, yeah, Saria, right. Saria did say that's an option for me, carboplatin. Right, Peter. It's it's it is it's it's definitely part of the NCCN guidelines for prostate cancer because I just looked at I just looked at those guidelines earlier this week. Okay, so good. What well, I think I is you carbon platen. Hold on, hold on a second. Let me just finish my thought. I think that it is approved for bracket for where there's a certain mutation present. So if you have a mutation, a BRCA mutation, then carboplatin is a recommended drug. Sorry, but go not ahead. Early by itself. Um, I think in the I I need to look at the NCCN guidelines oh. again. I think in the NCCN guidelines, I think it said either with docetaxel or on its own, but I can't remember. I I can pull them up because I have them saved, but I'd have to look. But I mean, I'm I, reading a paper here that 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 says basically I'll quote it. It says, in a population of 
advanced prostate cancer patients, platinum-based therapy was associated with anti-tumor activity, especially among patients with DNA repair gene alterations. This is what the literature says. Good. Okay. Well, Carl, you get you get the point. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I you will. Know, I will. You know, I will definitely follow up tomorrow, and I'm going to send an email to uh, Soraya and have a more detailed discussion. Thank you. Yeah. Talk it up, because I lost a guy that I was advocating for on Maui, because his oncologist would not go with carboplatin, even though he was like you, BRCA uh, germline. And I leaned on him, and, and but this guy wouldn't speak up for himself. So you're your own advocate. You can uh, yeah. ask the questions. Floor. Okay, we got a lot, lot of people. I think there's some, uh, not, uh, some new people, but well, let's keep moving here. Um, Jake, you're up. Okay, thank you. Um, just, a, just an update on me. Um, I've been on uh, carb. I mean, uh, cyclophosphamide, which is an oral chemotherapy, for about 15 days now. Um, I had a PSA last week. Um, my, my PSA went up. Robert Giles, I'm going to mute you. Um, anyway, I had a PSA. It did go up from went from 373 in one month and went up to 436. But oh. I think it's actually going down. <laughs> that doesn't probably make sense to anybody. But I, I, I was before when it went from 162 to 373. My the, I calculated the doubling time as being less than a month, and now it went up 16, 16, 17 percent. With, with and my doubling time is four to four and a half months, <clears throat> and I think because I've only been on it, for, you know, for I had only been on it nine days. I actually think the PSA had risen between April and May, <clears throat> and then this when, once I started taking the cyclophosphamide, cyclophosphamide I think it actually think it stopped. Actually it stopped. actually brought it down. If that makes any kind of sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Thank you. How are you feeling? Um, you know, Rick asked me that earlier. I'm, I, I don't know. I, 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 uh, I've been, I'm so used to being tired, and I have been for years. Um, so it's probably nothing new. Um, I don't feel any worse than I did with the, with the uh, than I did on the docetaxel. Um, I definitely felt better when I was off the docetaxel. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Um, so I'm, so I'm back to now feeling I'm, I'm a little bit short of breath again, which I'm, I'm convinced is a side effect. Um, so I'm doing okay. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. So hopefully next month when I, I, I'm going on the fifth, hopefully I'll have another PSA and I'm, I'm hoping that it will actually go down big time. Good. So, um, Jake, when, when was that 373? That was, um, 7th of April. Okay. And then the 5th uh, of May, it was 436. And because I had some, I had a um, 160, and that, that was, January. that must have been in March. Oh, that was January? Yeah. So between, I, I didn't do anything for three months. Oh, so I got it, 373, got it, yeah, 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 got it, yeah. Okay, so what you're saying is you think the doubling time is 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 reducing, um, yeah. and I think I think the PSA actually had gone up more than the 373 in the month because at a doubling time of less than a month it was probably up to five or six hundred. So well, but, now but it Jake, went down to 436. You, the way I'm looking at it. Well, Jake, if you said you had 160 in January, yeah, and like 373 in April, yep. Yeah. So that's a doubling time of a little of like two and a half months. Yeah, well, I don't know. I I, I probably have the wrong formula <laughs> for calculating doubling time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could if I send me your numbers and I'll I'll do the real calculations. But I think you know it it obviously it didn't go up that as much as you might have expected, which is good news. Correct. Exactly, and which makes me think that the that is actually working, right? And you know, of course, next month will will, will be the the tell all 
Well, what no, about your Alkfoss? Um, is that what's that? Because is that going up, going down, going up? Uh, it went up big time. From um, what to what? Hang on a second. Let me check. Well, it was 160. What was it this time? Well, in uh, <clears throat> in January it was 61. Right. In April it was 153. Right. And on the 5th of May it was 170. So, you know, again, you know, it, it's always difficult with Outfoss because we don't know if it's reflecting growth or if it's reflecting dead turnover in the bone because it's killing off the cancer. Right. Um, but I, you know, I think that um, that it's gone up just a little bit is probably a good sign um, since you were off everything for quite a while and now that's slowed down as well. Correct. Um, I just wanted to, um, Jerry, Jerry B in Indiana has got a note in the- I'm writing an answer. Um, why don't you answer? I think it's appropriate to everybody. So I think we should address that. Go ahead, Herb. So doubling time is essentially the amount of time that it takes your PSA to go double the, its previous level if it's increasing. So in other words, if it's going up from, if, it, if January 1st it was eight and February 1st it's 16, that's a doubling time of one month. Right. If it's January 1st it's eight and March 1st it's 16, it's a doubling time of two months. Likewise, so that's essentially the, the definition of doubling time, the time it takes for PSA to double its level if it's increasing. And, and the red flag, Jerry, is usually three months. Anything less than three months is kind of a watch out and, uh, and oncologists take note. My, my doubling time when, my, when mine gets going, even though it's at a very low level, can sometimes be um, four weeks. So, so it isn't the absolute number that they're watching, it's how fast it's moving. Okay, uh, Robert Giles. Oh, oh, you... Hold on a second, Peter. You're, I know you wanna get through, but I just wanna make sure no one else has any other questions about cyclophosphamide or, or anything else for Jake. Does the group have anything they wanna say to Jake? Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. Uh, Robert, you guys, you're you're muted. Is this your first time on the call? No. This is my first time on this call. Yes. Okay. H hang on, because you How's came in a little doing late. You, because you came in a little late, we'll, we will squeeze you in, but you'll get you'll get the rhythm of it. The, some of the other guys have some reporting to do, and we'll get to you. Okay. Yeah, Robert, you you. No, that's been... fine. I'm I'm okay with just listening, and I'm just happy to be uh, part of the group. That's all. Um, Robert, you were in another group, though, right? You... Yeah, I did join a group last Tuesday. Um, I don't I don't know if anyone from this group was in that group last or uh, two weeks ago Tuesday. Yeah, what group was that? Weren't you in the MS group? Yes. So this is, is this a prostate, the wrong group? This is a prostate cancer group. The MS group ah. starts. <laughs> the <laughs> MS group starts at um, eight thirty Eastern tonight, and we hope you come back. Okay. Well, thank you for the heads up. I apologize for the inconvenience. <laughs> okay. Uh, I knew I, but, I knew uh, I'd seen your name before. I knew I'd seen your name before. <laughs> I'll be there. Come on back. We'd love to have you back in the multiple sclerosis group. And we hope you don't get right. prostate cancer. Okay? Sounds good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, good Bye good guys. Catch. Good catch, Rick. Okay, Jimmy. Jimmy Greenfield. Oh, hello. I hope we never see Robert again for his sake. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, okay, so, yeah, uh, I'm fine, really. I mean, I... I had an uh, unexplained 104 degree fever uh, about a week and a half ago. That was very uh, almost frightening because that's you know that's that's a lot of that's a lot of fever for a boomer. So uh, I spent 12 hours in the emergency room. At the advice of my brother, I went to Hopkins and 
because that's where I've gotten all the treatment and they just made me wait forever, but they made me wait forever because they ran a bunch of tests and they took them forever to get them back. And so I waited in the waiting room for a very long time and uh, they couldn't find anything. They tested for everything, found nothing. And my brother, retired physician, he says, see, that's why you go there. Because a lot of places, they would just throw a bunch of antibiotics in you and before they you know, find anything uh, or not find anything. So it, it, it disappeared as mysteriously as it, it appeared. I wish I knew what it was. I haven't had a fever like that since I was a child. But, you know, things happen, right? Um, the other news is that my uh, artificial sphincter is still working beautifully, but it's still irritated in the scrotum. It's still painful down there a little bit. It stings. I'm going to go back and have it looked at one more time. Um, it's it's delicate down there. Uh, you know, I, I don't know quite how to put it. It's not exactly painful, but it is definitely very sensitive in the skin and very uh, uh, just kind of vaguely uncomfortable. Um, I have my uh, a complete workup of testosterone by the urologist, which I didn't expect. And he gave me my my total and my free and my bioavailable and the estradiol and the LH and all this stuff. And um, he says, you know, I'm I'm doing fine. I mean, that's what everybody says. You know, your PSA isn't detectable. Your testosterone is not rising very quickly by level of how fast you want it to come back. But um, in the in the in the overall scheme of things, it's a very ordinary sort of uh, progression of returning uh, testosterone. Although I, I understand why the numbers are sort of misleading. Um, it's a diff it's, it's an unusual test. I mean, maybe you heard, maybe you guys know more about why it's sort of unreliable. Um, fasting makes a difference, but I had 251 and then a week later it was 117. So um, I'm not discouraged or anything. I just, um, I figure that uh, this is part of the deal. And um, I have the usual low-grade terror that, you know, when when the testosterone comes back to, uh, you know, if it does to three, four, five hundred or whatever, that, uh, you know, that that concurrently, PSA will rise and then I'll have to deal with it. But as I always like to say, I don't have to deal with it today. Only thing I have to deal with today is my wife's out of town, and instead of having the cigars and uh, poker and have the boys over and, and uh, have a nice time. Instead, I'm cleaning the house and mowing the yard and everything else. So life's just <laughs> isn't how it used to be. But that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm happier this way in the long run. Jimmy? That's all I, that's all I have. I'm sure there's some, some of the other guys have an interest in the artificial sphincter. I, I just have a question. Have you, have you been able to talk to other guys that have that implant and uh, what their experience is? Have you met other guys? Uh, no, it's it's a little bit of a tough one, Peter, because not all that many guys get it. You know, it's considered to be a last stop, and and you know, it's it's great um, if you need it, but it's it's an upheaval. It's another surgery. A lot of guys don't want to get it. The sling is more popular, and of course, Kegels, Kegels, Kegels is more popular still. But I tried everything, and right. I don't, you know, I'm I'm not a guy who's like the, the half measures of stuff. I really, really tried and just couldn't even really um, get anywhere. So I was happy to get it, but the short answer is no, I really don't know anyone. Anybody have a question for uh, Jimmy on, on the uh, artificial sphincter to deal with? Uh, deal with uh, Bill there, Bill said that he uh, having problems. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yep. Sure. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to state something that uh, a friend of mine here in Chicago uh, had an AUS and it worked well for about six months. Then it, it eroded, it shifted. He had to have it removed. And then it took, I think, three or four months for him to heal. And he had another one put in. And then what he does now is at night, he turns it off. He believes that that helps keep it longer. My situation is um, I don't want to get an AUS. I don't like anything internal if, unless necessary. So I just... Uh, signed up and got a product called men's liberty anybody know what that is no. it's an external catheter hmm. and, and i was wondering if anybody had any advice on that on an external catheter or should i wait until later in the discussion have you tried it did you try it, jim 
No, no. Have you tried it? I mean, I, I tried it. I got it a week ago, and it's uh, it's it's um, in mixed success because, like, once it what, what essentially it is, you end up taping it to the tip of your penis, external catheter. And once I got in the car, the thing popped off, so my pants got instantly wet. Uh, another time I went to sleep and then woke up and the thing had popped off. And uh, it, it's kind of complicated in as much as I'm uncircumcised. So it's a little more uh, awkward to have to put this uh, tape all over the place and then pull the foreskin over it. But anyway, uh, the concept is good. It's a little bag that, that, that uh, you know, sits inside your thigh. And I'm thinking of make, maybe making some kind of a device like a pocket with with a, a strip of cloth or a band that goes up to the belt because you urinate into the you know bag of course and then uh, it's pulling down all day on your penis actually so my <laughs> concept is to have a little bag to hold it because you actually end up going to the bathroom to empty this thing you know maybe every hour or so uh, but the weight of it pulling down is what's kind of awkward and after you jog or run. It makes it so. I was hoping somebody on here had experience with this men's liberty external catheter. Anybody? No, I guess not. <laughs> okay. but, I, but, anyway. but I have, but yeah. I, have read, I have read about a similar device called the Stadium Pal. Oh, <laughs> it only works the same. No, no different. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a good name. <laughs> but is it the same idea, an external catheter? The same idea is you you put something over your penis and you urinate and it collects in a bag. So you can just yeah. keep ordering the beers during the game. Yeah. And then they also have a night bag that, because the original pouch is like five inches, um, doesn't carry a lot, but, but the night bag is, is huge. And you can reuse a night bag with a day when you change every day. But the night bag, uh, if you travel or something, it can come in very handy. But it's just awkward trying to live with this device. But I really think it's it's, it's going to work once I get to know the ins and outs. And and they have a nurse practitioner line you call, and they're very open to talk about all this stuff and give you advice. But uh, that's what I'm trying now, trying to avoid the AUS because uh, and and AUS does not last forever. I don't know if Jimmy knows that. It's, it's uh, yeah. after a certain number of years, it, it can malfunction. Yeah, I gotta say, Bill, I, 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 uh, once you have the uh, the uh, certain level of disease and you're and you're dealing with that, the idea that something might have to be replaced in seven or ten years doesn't have the same uh, weight that it did no. before. If it lasts seven That's or eight or ten years for me, I'm good. The thing I will say though is uh, it works great, and it also is something inside of you and I think for me, the um, I already have, you know, urgency issues left over from before. I had, you know, a lot of, um, uh, you know, already existing, you know, nocturnal frequency and stuff like that. And that stuff has not really gotten any better. I was, the last thing I want to say is my PA has told me that I didn't expect this. She says, you should continue to do Kegel exercises because it will take some of the pressure off of that thing. Oh. Maybe last longer and make it more foolproof to keep you dry although it does keep me completely dry maybe that will make it last longer i don't know i didn't even think of that the last thing i want to do is go start doing the kegels again if i don't think they're going to do any good but if i thought they'd make the aus last longer i'm get right on it that's it yeah. it's in discussion anybody else pat do you have did you have something you wanted to add yes i do yes i do um i was just typing up something I used a leg bag and external catheter for several months, oh. and uh, it was useful. It was a spray glue almost. You spray on your penis and glue a condom to, and it went into a leg bag. Uh, some funny stories arise, <laughs> arise from that, but other than that, it was effective, and I was able to use it. Uh, I found myself not trying to hold back and so i got rid of it and basically said i'll just use a uh, pad and go from there and so i'm going through about a pad a day but uh -huh. yeah, 
Well, well, two things I want to say. One is, uh, for me, the uh, six-year anniversary of my lobotic prostatectomy, and I go through about uh, sometimes six uh, six pads a day, you know, pretty heavily. So it's a pretty severe problem. And the other thing with the AUS, uh, I know it's uh, uh, my friend who had it said it, it worked for him very well until the thing erode, eroded, which I guess is shifted in his body. But he, he likes it. But the thing that gets me is this device, I think, is like 30 years old. I think they should upgrade it with some kind of an electric switch instead of a little turn screw in your scrotum. So it's a very old device that's not really been updated. If they updated it, it might be a more successful. That's the AUS. It might be a more successful product. Interesting. Well, you get to work on that, Bill? That's right. Did what? I need I you to get to work on that. What, I think what we talked about last time is um, having a Bluetooth signal emit so you could uh, start it and stop it from your phone. Wasn't that right, Jimmy? <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, the advances is, are, are coming, but like a lot of other things, they may not come from me. But I, yeah, I, I yeah. say overall, I'm very happy with it. And I just, you know, if it doesn't last forever, I'm good with that too. And you've been in continence for as long as I have, and Bill, for as long as you have, when you get a, a, an answer that I don't even use a, a pad anymore. No pads, dry as a bone. Uh, so you can't, you know, uh, it's, hard yeah. to, it's hard to refuse that. Um, let, oh, that's let wonderful. Me, uh, let, let, me, um, let me ask Jimmy a question. Jimmy, did you say that your testosterone recently tested on one occasion to 250 but then it was 115 when you tested again from 251 a week later it was 117 and when was that how long ago uh you know uh three weeks ago okay so let let me just say something first of all that's great because it really it does show that your testosterone is coming back finally because the last time i talked to you it was in the it was less than 100 so it's coming back number one number two testosterone swings violently it all depends what time of day and i i don't know what influences dr mark isn't on the call today he could no. tell you but it can it can easily swing two or three hundred points you can test 400 one day 700 another day so the fact that it's swung like that um is is not something you should be too concerned with. What you should be happy about is that you really back up to 250 and you may be getting back up even higher. And 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 that is a great sign. That's why I, I wanted uh, to come back to you and, and, and verify that. That's great. Yeah, I, let me just say that, um, you know, I don't have any re, um, very noticeable lessening of side effect except fatigue. I don't have the fatigue. I don't have, I mean, my mood is different. It, I can definitely feel a difference. I don't want to get too attached to it, you know, but it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing. My wife has put a, a, a padlock on the bedroom door, so I must be coming along. <laughs> now, Jimmy, how long are you off the ADT? Last shot, uh, last three months shot of Elagard was in September of last year. So that September wore off in, say, December, and we'll we're... So you're six months out. So th this is all right. And I, again, I'm bringing this out because a lot of guys ask that question. How long is it going to take to get back? It, there's a lot of factors, your age, how long you were on it. But, you know, we usually think that if you start, see, I didn't see anything for, for the first six months. So I think you're, I think you're on the track and, and it's good to hear. Well, thank you. I certainly feel I feel uh, I feel differently. I don't want to talk about how great I feel because I know a lot of guys here, you know, they're on the sauce and uh, it makes me feel funny. But you know, for all those who have been on intermittent or, you know, anything like that, then you, you know what it's like. And when you've been on the sauce for a while, then, uh, you know, you hang in there like I did. I exercised a lot, tolerated it well. Didn't really feel like it was that big a deal. But when you take it away, I'm like, wow, OK. So not everybody gets that reaction too. Some people don't have that strong a reaction to it. Some people didn't have high testosterone when they began. But for me, yeah, it's, I can feel the difference. Okay, guys. So let's let's move on a little bit. Bill, I sympathize with you though. I I was on uh, 
catheters for eight months when I started this journey, not because I was leaking, but because I had retention. And I know that that feeling of the weight of the bag on your leg, every every week I'd be experimenting, I'd be using Velcro, I'd be using snap, snap uh, trunk latches. I had I was doing everything. I was making my own stuff. And then the night bags, you know, when, that, when those overflowed onto the rug, you know, I had to start carrying buckets around. So I know I know the, the pain and the craziness. Okay, let's move on to uh, Joe. Joe Mergia. You still with us? Okay. Yeah. You got me? Yep. Okay. Uh, a question i thought i heard somewhere that a well-known uh general urinary oncologist from chicago was moving to dana farber did i hear that or did i dream that you heard it when is it going to happen um i want to say june John Ivory, when's it going to happen? I know her last, uh, she's last seen patients in Chicago in June. I don't have any idea when she started in a day by Dana Farber. Okay, because uh, I looked both places and it didn't look like anything had changed. Yeah, Alicia Morgan's. So, yeah. Well, I'm. I'm thinking I want to move up from uh, my present medical oncologist. Uh, my loss is your gain. Okay. And uh, <laughs> he he's much pretty much there for writing prescriptions for me. He doesn't uh, he tolerates me, which I appreciate because after 19 years of this, I'm on. Uh, the only medicine I'm on and ever been on is bicalutamide. So I'm wondering if I went to, uh, let's say Dana Farber, would uh, would they tolerate me, or would I mean, they might tolerate tolerate me for a little while. Maybe I'd get a good workup, but would they send me packing after a while? I. I Joe, they're never going to send you packing. The issue is. I've going been to... sent packing before. Well, I I think the docs that we would send you to are not going to send you packing because because they're not the, that kind of doc. I think what might happen is you might send yourself packing if you didn't like the therapy they suggested. That mm -hmm. that could be an issue. So um, a couple of things I want to say to you. First of all, we do love Day Alicia Morgan. She's She's the best, but we can also recommend other doctors who are already at Dana Farber, who we know are great docs, and we'd be happy to do that. Um, uh, Chris Sweeney, Christopher Sweeney, um, a lot of people really like him. He's Australian. He looks, he used to look just like Robin Williams. I don't know. I think he's got less hair now, but um, he. He has a great manner. He's a really good guy. Um, another guy we like is Atish, A-T-I-S-H, Chowdhury. I think he spells it C-H-O-U-D-U-R-Y, Atish Chowdhury. Um, I mean, I can name other docs, but they, they're not as high up on my, on my list. Um, but, you know, I think... Um, Oh, there was a guy, there's a guy that uh, Rusty sees there who he likes. I think his name is Parker. Um, let, let me let me look and see if I can give you that name. But uh, anybody else have any names uh, they want to bring up at, um, at Dana Farber? Ellie, uh, Ellie Van Allen is lovely, but he doesn't see a lot of patients because he, but he's really good. If you could get an appointment with him, you would like him. Ellie, E-L-I, Van Allen. A any other names, anyone? No? 
Here, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what Ross's guy is called. I'll try to anyway, if I've got it written down. No, I don't. Joe, where are you going now? Roberts. Ro sorry, Dr. Ro Roberts is the, Roberts works under Sweeney. I don't know his first name, but, um, but Russ seemed to like him. Yeah, I'm going just to a local uh, oncologist and oncology group. In, right now. Isn't Ken Anderson using uh, Paul Korn at MD Anderson? No, we're talking about Dana Farber. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. But you were you you were only three thousand miles off, two thousand miles off, but you're close. Um, let's just see. Uh, Joe, where do you live? Uh, Syracuse area. New York. You know, there's there's a guy. There is a guy that um, there is a guy in Rochester that quite a few, a couple of the guys have used, and they like him. Is Tracy on today? Let me give you his name. Hold on a minute, so so you don't have to go so far. I mean, you could take you could take a, a scooter over to Rochester, couldn't you, from the Syracuse area? about a hundred miles and how far is it to boston 300 okay we want 10 we want 10 percent of the gas savings here uh joe um let me give you let me tell you his name um boom 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 uh, i just i don't have it i'm looking at his notes and i didn't write the name down um i'll find it for you and send it to you does anyone okay. else anyone else from on the call from that rochester area who um who sees we got one other guy who seems that sees the same dark watch the chat window i'll see if i can find it for you if not i will definitely definitely send it to you but he's he's had um he's had good um He's he's gotten a very good response from that guy, and I would say that um, you know, based on that, I wouldn't have a problem referring you. Okay. I, mu I must I must say, 19 years on bio bicalutamide as monotherapy is pretty amazing. I've only been on the bicalutamide two years. Oh, two years. Okay. The rest was uh, nothing. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, Peter. Yes. Peter, Peter, I do have a piece of breaking news. Since we're talking about docs moving everywhere. Um, Joe Blanchett emailed me right before the meeting and said that um, Dr. Antanarakis is on the move. Hmm. And uh, he's leaving Hopkins in June. And he's got who's going to be the lucky winner? Anybody who's close to Minneapolis. He's going to Masonic at the University of Minnesota. As far as I know, Chuck Ryan is still still going to be there. So what I'm guessing is Chuck has hired him to head up the uh, GU service. The Janito Urinary Service. And if he has, it's a really great acquisition for Chuck. I'm really pleased for both of them. I hate to hear that, Rick. Yeah. Because I have um, a teleconference relationship with Antana Rockus. Well, that's not so bad for two reasons, okay? One is that in the worst place, It'll happen. It'll happen to you. What ha has happened to Joel? They've reassigned him to um, Sam Denmead, who we know and, right. and like. The other is that we could probably get Antanarakis to talk to you from the University of Minnesota. Right. There's no reason why not, and especially since you know I I can lean on Chuck. And Antanarakis knows us, and I think that you, we could just as easily when you next. Next time you want to speak to him, you'll 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 tell us. And Herb has put, uh, I think that's who it is, Van Veltheisen. 
I think that's who it is at Rochester. So, Herb, could you put that out for everybody? I think that was the guy. So, Joe Merger, this is a guy that we, who's a GU Medonk in Rochester. That I think that's um, Tracy's guy. Okay, if thank you, you. If you don't hear from us, we'll confirm. Thank you, Herb. Okay. Well, that, that news doesn't surprise me because Minneapolis is turning into a huge uh, medical uh, focus. Not, you know, I'm not talking about Mayo, I'm just talking about Minneapolis itself. If you drive around there, there's medical centers on every corner, big ones, um, and they're attracting uh, you know, all kinds of professionals in all kinds of fields there. So uh, you know, it could just be part of the equation. Well, the other part is that Hopkins just pays terribly. It's like the lowest paid physicians you can imagine are at Hopkins. And they, I mean, I had a cousin who was there and moved from Hopkins to the Mayo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Julian, you're up. Okay, just an update. I, I've been talking to Rick off and on. Uh, my doctor had recommended SBRT and HT, and Rick said maybe I should think about Bracky. So I, I got a, an appointment coming up with a doctor, uh, Andrew Peroch, at the Houston Methodist downtown in the medical center. Uh, see what he says. These permanent seeds or, or high dose Bracky? I don't know. This, this is my first conversation uh, because my uh, current radiation oncologist didn't even recommend Bracky of any kind. Now it's kind of a you know you got to dig a little deeper in the in the uh, in the closet for it because it's, it's it's gone out of favor for financial reasons. Although HDR Bracky is. It's pretty high tech and they, I'm sure they can bring in, but even that they don't have, you only go twice in two weeks. So they, they can't bring in that much money either. Sometimes um, once, you, so, some people do it in one session, some in two, um, but l l let's just remind everybody, um, Julian's situation is that he, um, he had a focal therapy with Walzer at UTMB and the disease came back. So now this is the second time around and the, um, the Gleason uh, is four plus five, according to Epstein, Epstein. And so we're trying to figure out what's the right treatment. And, and what I wanted to say to you is that um, we pretty much know that the gold standard is, I, and, and this has been proven out in a number of tests, uh, trials is uh, IMRT plus brachy plus uh, hormone therapy. So um, that that's a really good combination. It's a better combination than just plain hormone therapy, plain um, image guided radiation, um, and um, uh, and hormone therapy. Um, the only other thing we seem to think, which this is a, this hasn't, I don't believe, been trialed, but it's been suggested by Mac Roach in his PCRI lectures, is that stereotactic radiation plus um, IMRT plus hormone therapy works as well as the breaking. So, you know, the IMRT and the hormone therapy, they kind of don't move. The question is, how do you treat the gland? And um, the gold standard we know is brachy, but the alternative could be SBRT. Now, what type of brachy? That usually depends on how much cancer. And um, also what's available, because as Peter says, not a lot of people do seeds anymore. Um, I don't know if there's really a big difference between the HDR and the, the high dose and the low dose. Maybe somebody else on the call on, in this group does. Um, but I think if it were me, I'd be very comfortable with that, some combination of brachytherapy or SBRT plus image guided radiation to the pelvic girdle and at least 18 months of hormone therapy. 
Yeah, so I think I'm on track for the 18 month, but uh, I, I need to talk to the uh, Breaky doctor and then uh, go back to Dr. Burma and see what she says about the FBRT and, and IMRT. Yeah. Okay. Julian, Julian, what did what did you they say your Gleason score was when you did the focal therapy? Uh, it was at eight point. No, not your PSA. Your your Gleason score did. Uh, it was four point uh, three plus four. Uh huh. Interesting. Yeah. And then Peter, and then and then when it it got retested. More recently, it was shown locally as a four plus four, and Epstein raised it to a four plus five. So there was probably more going on there. I mean, it wasn't just growing. I think probably something was missed. Is my guess. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's what I'm thinking. That something was missed, but he did. Walter did treat three areas. Hmm. Anybody you else know, have a question that, about? And that, and that concerns me too, because if you've got to have focal therapy in three different places, <clears throat> you, you've got to wonder whether focal therapy is the right treatment in the first place. Why Walls is treating you in three different places for, th for focal therapy, wouldn't you say, Peter? I, I think so. I mean, I mean, those of us, well, I mean, we're on the advanced call, so we don't talk much about focal therapy, but uh, except when it's when it's failed earlier, and we, we all probably have some horror stories and bad stories about friends or people we know that went through it and then later on got diagnosed with something more serious. It's um, it's a tough one. It's, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't. I mean, it's been a re focal therapy doesn't seem to be moving it, it on a fast track to be well accepted. And, right. and, the, and the good practitioners know where their limitations are. They'll just, you know, they'll make sure that they're treating someone who's really a three plus three or maybe a three plus four, but uh, they don't want to take a risk beyond that and, it's, and rightly so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've had too many people in this group, this very, this group who are, returning to us after having done focal therapy. I mean, right now on the call, Jake is one. Um, Dr. Mark is another. Uh, Julian is another. I, I don't know, those are three that come to mind right away. So um, you, I know it doesn't concern many of the guys here, but you've got to be very selective if you choose uh, if you choose focal therapy as your initial treatment, you've got to make sure you're well suited. Yeah, and it's still considered experimental on a lot of levels. Right. right. So be and expensive. And expensive, yes. Okay. Uh, Kang, you've got something. Hi. Um, I went to uh, my uh, my doctor about a week ago. Uh, <clears throat> the PSA dropped to 0 0.1 something like that. Um, but other numbers are not uh, that good, uh, the blood work. Uh, doctor mentioned uh, six weeks ago, you know, either uh, blood pressure could be a problem or liver function could be a problem. Uh, it turned out my blood pressure seems okay, um, but the ELT, it has gone up uh, consecutively for the last three uh, test blood work from 26 to 59, 68, 92. Um, and the, I guess the comfort zone is from 1 to 45. So uh, this ALT is probably what it, what it is uh, about the liver functioning. And um, I did get uh, a notice from the, uh, Nurse practitioner said they would do a, a, a blood work two, uh, a week from now. If it still goes up, they might hold off the Zantiga. Uh, and they will decide then. Uh, we'll find out what's going to be. I guess that's the update of my status. 
How long have you been on Zytiga? Since uh, February, uh, mid February or late February, February 24th. So it's only only three months something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so either uh, it's a possibility of uh, reduce the dosage or hold uh, the Zatiga, maybe some other medication, which uh, which I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't know what to ask, uh, but a week from now, once the blood work comes out, they will probably let me know. Um, yeah, that's about it. Anybody else have a comment on this? I know Zytiga can can uh, stir things yes. up liver. Right. Yeah, I, I, I do. Oh. Go ahead, Herb. No, uh, liver enzymes are definitely affected or can be affected by Zytiga. Yeah, I was on Zy I was on Zytiga for about a month and uh, a month and a week, and uh, my liver, uh, my blood test showed my liver functions were going south. A uh, couple of obviously going up, but but they were going south uh, ge uh, generically, and um, I got off of it for about uh, a week or so. Uh, the liver function was, the blood test showed they were returning to normal. Um, I went on half a dose. They started going up again. Uh, and now um, after consultation, and, um, and I spoke to Rick about this, uh, I'm now on uh, enzalutamide. And uh, my liver functions have returned back to normal. So, Kang, this is Jim Ward. Um, I, I experienced some elevated ALT. Uh, and AST, um, and it, it was right after I began Zytiga as well. But I think they were elevated for at least two or three months, and we just kind of stayed the course, and then it leveled off, and then it went back to normal levels. So obviously everybody can have a different experience, but that's my recollection. Um, it was some time ago, but I, I could swear there were at least, there were two or three readings that were elevated and they just kind of uh, uh, counsel to be patient, and it did level out. What about bilirubin? Did that change, Kang? Well, funny thing is about bilirubin is uh, the last time I mentioned about the bilirubin was going up because uh, the normal range was, well, like, I don't know, from when to where to, I think it's 12. Right, the twelve is the upper range. So the last six six weeks, uh, six weeks weeks ago, the blood work, uh, the big Robin was eighteen. So I was worried. I remember Lynn was saying normally the Robin Bill Robin will fall down, fall back to where it was. Uh, it is a fall back to twelve, as the upper range uh, limit of twelve. Um, but this ALT just seems going up, going north, uh, non-stop, non-stopping. You know, it was like 28, 26, right? Once, the, once I started Zantica, uh, it's, it's going up 59, 68, 92. It has no, no sign of stopping, no signs of slowing down. And also uh, ALT. Kang couple of things one do, do you feel crummy I mean do you feel like a little bit sick and sort of sort of a little lethargic all the time with Zantiga yes definitely but I I take the advice of uh, of of people from the supporting group or go outdoors as much as I can it did make a difference it, you know it would be like many <laughs> times uh, it does make a difference, I have to say. But I noticed, uh, you know, when you are getting old is one thing, but this uh, medication of Zantiga, maybe Lopron, I don't know, uh, just makes that process goes faster. You, you know, you you, you just uh, uh, going down your 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 physical or yeah. some other some other things goes with it. It's going down faster. That I you know. I would say. 
I'd say a couple of things to you on this one. First of all, um, I never did Zytiga. I didn't have to, thank goodness. Um, but I had problems with my AOT and my AST just from the Lupron, and they were high all the time I was on the Lupron. Um, they were right at that. They were right at the, uh, at the upper limit, not at the height that you're at, but they were right, I think, at that 45 limit. Um, so the Lupron can affect you, and the abiraterone definitely affects you because abiraterone is processed through the liver. And that's the reason why we're able to, uh, some people will, will take a lower dose of abiraterone with food um, because it becomes more active um, because of the liver function in your digestion. Um, what I was going to suggest, but, but Stan beat me to it, is that um, to discuss about going from abiraterone to enzalutamide, um, or not necessarily only enzalutamide, you could consider apalutamide, or even better, if you could get your doctor to go with it, uh, darolutamide. Um, because those are all androgen blockers. They work in a different way and they're not processed through the liver. And probably what you're gonna find is that that liver function will return to normal. And we hope that it will do just as good a job in controlling um, the prostate cancer. And so you'll be able to stick at that 0 0.1 level. So Stan, how has your PSA um, moved when you went from abiraterone to enzalutamide? It's gone down. It's gone down? Yeah, it was uh, about, it went down to 0.89 and the last uh, reading I have now is uh, 0.34. Great, okay. Well, Kang, I don't know that yours is going to go down much more because you're already at that point one, but you might be at less than point one, which is the dream place. Um, so if it were me, I think I'd be talking to my docs about switching to a different um, drug. It looks like they're thinking the same way. You, you see Dr. Tsao, right, at, um, at Sinai? Yes. Okay, so here's the good news. Dr. O was able to get bicalutamide for Len. Oh, darolutamide. 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 Thank you for correcting me. Dr. O was able to get darolutamide for Len. So maybe you can lean on Dr. Am I saying it right? How do you pronounce it? Chow, uh, chow. Yes, A O. Chow. Chow. So, so maybe you can lean on Dr. Sao to try and get you the bike, the uh, daraludamide, no. which would be fantastic. I, should I mention uh, Lin's case? Sure, you can. Okay. You can okay. say that, you know one of the guys in your support group is a patient of Dr. O's. And he got him by and he got him uh, daraludamide. I'll bring it up and see what happens, and uh, I will report. Okay. 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 Kang, one other one other tip because I've been on daraludamide for about a year and a half now, and it, it doesn't. I don't qualify for insurance on it. In fact, my insurance uh, told me they wouldn't give it to me, but Bayer gives it to me out of their own pocket. They, Bayer sends it to me every month for a year and a half, and I'm good till the end of this year uh, again with it. So, um, so there are ways ways around the game here. Um, it's, so it's not just a doctor. It could be could be Bayer itself could be a key player in it. You think I should contact Bayer uh, myself or? Well, well, they have. Bayer has a program where you can get two months of it free uh, through their dude program, and I think they still run that. So I did I did that. My doctor signed me up for that. And then when the two months was up, I Bayer said, apply for it under our patient assistance program, which I did, and they started giving it to me. And it never even goes through my insurance. 
Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Maybe I'll bring up first uh, to talk about uh, Lin's case and, uh, and yes. see what you say. Yeah, I, I think I think Kang, you've got to start with your doctor, and because in order to get the the dude program, the two months free, your doctor's got to sign off on it. So start with your doctor, and then go to the dude program, and then see what happens at the end of the dude program. And we have very good connections with um, with Bayer, so um, we see where you go, and if you hit any roadblocks maybe we can help you know behind the scenes a little bit i i don't know i'm not can't make any promises but i can tell you we have open channels to bear okay i'll, hey, I'll Kane, find out this is this is jim i want to ask you one can you tell us again when did you start Cytiga? uh february 24th at the end of february march april may so it's uh three months Okay. Yeah, I, I'll just tell you before you write off Zytiga completely. I actually went back and found my old labs, and um, after I started, it was about um, it's about a month and a half in. My uh, ALT got up to one ninety six. Oh, that was much higher. And it, and then it leveled off. And I mean, I took Zytiga for two years, and it stayed. You know, the ALT and the and the AST got up to ninety one at the same time. So there was this initial thought to take me off it or maybe reduce the dose, but we, we just kind of decided to let it go a little bit longer and get, get another set of labs. And then the, then it all just started coming back down. So it's something did, to think about. Yeah. Did you reduce your dose, dose eventually or you stayed? No, the we just stayed the course and, and it all leveled off and stayed within normal right. range for, you know, two years. Where is your ALT now? Oh gosh! Um, I mean, just before I just before I stopped ADT in in uh, January, um, my ALT was at 21 and my okay. AS, AST was at 26, and it's, that's, that's where it was for the longest time. So great. Yeah, Tal did mention things like uh, reduce the dosage or hold and see. So I I guess I will find out a week from now. Yeah. yeah, and thank you for that, Jim. That's so helpful to you know to somebody like Kang. So that's really, really helpful. So it is. There is hope yet, Kang. Thank you. I, I find hope here. And and Kang, Kang, your other your other point about uh, aging. I mean, these drugs do funny things to you. I I did uh, Zytiga for a year, and I did not like it. It was, I felt what you were talking about. My mind was going, uh, all kinds of things were, I just I just felt very uncomfortable with it. And that's why I, I, I didn't want to go back on it. I switched to darolutamide and I feel much better as a result of it. Um, but that's, that's I mean, we all have different body chemistries. So I mean, think we're going to react to drugs differently, but that's a point, it's a, a very legitimate point that, you know, if we're on something for a long time, you know how it's making your mind and your body feel. I mean, you gotta you gotta speak up sometimes. Okay, okay, it, um, it's it's changing you. I mean, Zentega is changing you. You know, much faster to be downward. Yes. <laughs> I have to say that's very true. Yes, and we want to move up. I put a link in the in the chat box about uh, it has a link to the dude program that Peter mentioned. And you can get some information from there if you're interested. Okay, thanks, Jake. Thanks, yep. Jake. Just Jake. another comment about uh, arboriterone and the, the starting of Zytiga. I know in my case, my PSA went down at first, then it went up. And Len says, wait three or four months and see. And sure enough, at three or four months, it went back down again. So it, even the PSA, my, my AST and ALT were, were, were low and went down. But, which is sort of weird compared to what you're saying, but three or four months seems to make a difference. Okay. All right. I'll, yeah, about a week from now, I'll have a better idea, a better, clearer picture. Come okay. back and tell us. Come back and tell us, Kang. I will do. I'll do that. Okay, Peter Monaco, you've got something you want to bring up. Yeah, hi. Um, so, um, 
My last update, uh, I was going to have a consultation with my oncologist, Dr. Xiao, with uh, Sloan Kettering. I had that consultation to, you know, to discuss my um, rising PSA of late. Um, and once again, she was balking at going, uh, ordering a um, Asmin PET scan for me. Um, she laid out a course of 12 months of Lupron uh, to do simultaneously with uh, 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 bicalutamide, I guess, which is also known as Casidex. And that was her path of action. And I kept insisting that uh, I thought I should probably be getting a PET scan because it's a little alarming how fast my PSA has gone up in about six weeks, you know, from 0.1 to 0.7 to 1.7. So that's pretty quick. Uh, she didn't disagree with that. How was she? It was insisting that uh, she believes uh, that my disease is still early stage micrometastatic and a PET scan wouldn't change the course of things. So I was going back and forth with her, um, first on the phone, then communicating with her through the portal that they have. And then there was a divine intervention when I happened to speak to Jake, brother Jake, on an unrelated matter regarding our technology recordings. And he said, you know, you have every right to just insist that she give you this test and do with it what she will, but you should get the test, you're entitled to it. So I called back the office and said, you know, I wanna get this PET scan, irregardless of her course of action, I don't necessarily disagree with her. Uh, what she's recommending for me at this time, but I still want to know where I stand and if a PET scan might reveal something more than the standard issue, you know, a uh, CAT scan and bone scan, which have gone undetectable thus far. I uh, had them a couple of weeks ago. So I'm in the process. So they agreed and they sent me a script and I'm in the process of scheduling a PET scan right now. So thanks, Jake. <laughs> so, so we'll see. <laughs> Uh, what that might reveal, and if that should revise her uh, her path of action for me. Right. I'm glad well, I got help, Peter. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, look, I think there's a lot of guys on this call right now who are saying more power to you, Peter. Um, well, you know, it's true. You do have to advocate. It is true. Uh, you know, if I didn't have this, I was citing this group in my conversations with her. I was like, you know, Dr. Shao. I have to say, I, I, I attend these calls, it's called Answer Cancer, and it's a group of men uh, who are subject matter experts and yada, yada, yada. And uh, they are insisting that a PET scan is appropriate for me at this point in time, despite the bone scans and the CAT scans being clear. Um, so, uh, you know, I really think you, I would like you to reconsider that for me. And then she was, well, I really think this is good for you. You're micrometastatic. It's not going to show anything. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. And, uh, you know, again, I was still bantering with her through the portal through her staff, of course. And then again, I had to speak to Jake about our recordings. Uh, an, issue, an issue had come up, and I told him about this. And he says, yeah, you got to you gotta insist that she give you this test. You're entitled to it. That's right. So I, then I called the office. I said, I want the test. Tell her to send me the script. I'll go get it myself and send her the results. There you and go. Uh, no problem. And uh, I'm working out the details. What surprised me about scheduling a PET scan, you know, they, they recommended, Sloan did recommend places I should go. And one of them is a, a very nice, good hospital in our area called Overlook Hospital in uh, Summit, New Jersey. So I did contact them. And they wanted to see... Um, the uh, results of my uh, bone scan and, and CAT scan as part of this process, the scheduling process, which is something that they're doing now. So I expect to hear from them tomorrow with, you know, that they would have all the information they need and get me on their schedule. So that's where I'm at right now. But yeah. I didn't know that, you know, that surprised me that they wanted to see my bone scan and CAT scan results as part well, of the whole. I, old... let, let me say this. Um, first of all, I wouldn't be surprised if they even insist on you seeing one of their doctors first. Oh, um, okay. I don't know, but if they did, I wouldn't be that surprised. Secondly, I think the reason they're saying that is because it may be related to the Aximin approval, but the Medicare Aximin approval. Right, right. Um, and um, the fact is this is Medicare approved for, for men 65 or over, and you 
you are entitled to get to it. And frankly, if they say to you, you got to see a doc, you can say, you know, I got this script, this comes from MSKCC, they don't do it, and they want someone else to do it. This is why, gents, uh, it's difficult to get a, an axiom in scan at Memorial Sloan Kettering, um, because it, they make you jump through hoops. But I, I just want to say, we're really great. It's really great that you stood up for yourself, and we're very pleased to hear you're getting it. A anybody else have anything to say on this issue to uh, Peter? Uh, yes, I just wanted to say to Peter, and I, I was writing something in the chat directly to you, Peter, since I am also in New Jersey, and I've had two axiom scans at a particular facility where. Um, I highly recommend that you uh, look into uh, this Dr. Kranicki is his name, and uh, he has all, his own facility. He has a PET scan machine, which is a digital PET scanner, and he claims it's only one of a handful in the entire country, and it's the most advanced PET scanner. So he, he's been wonderful for, uh, to me. Can you send that information through the portal? Or or yeah, I, could say, I, could put my, I could put my email out there so you could just shoot it to me directly if that's... Okay, well, I'm sending right now in the chat directly to you, so... Okay, thank out. you. I, I see it. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank so in you. the meantime, I, I, you know, Dr. Shah had called in a um, prescription for me for the bicalutamide, but I made an executive decision. I've had it for a week. I, I'm not taking it until I get past this PET scan. I'm assuming that's the right thing to do. <laughs> I see a few heads <laughs> nodding. Because <laughs> I, I, I know it's going to start. It'll... From this group. <laughs> <laughs> we don't give, just remember, we don't give medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have, have you been but on I mean, the, the idea is it would start if it were to start the you know you know dropping a PSA and you know, getting the cancer to recede then that could skew the results of the PET scan I assume. Correct. So have you been on Casadex before? Peter? I I did uh, yeah in 2015 when I first started my journey um, I was on uh, that uh, Casadex it was only for about 30 days uh, and they, you know it was done in. Um, I started about two weeks before I started on on uh, Lupron. Then I went into radiation from there, you know, and that and that produced uh, you know a four-year uh, drug holiday for me. Um, so I didn't have any problem with it, you know, any of that treatment back then. Well, you we were only on it for 30 days. If you're going right. to be on it for longer, you might yes. want to have the conversation because it it can uh, enlarge your breasts. And uh, I so know I hear. Yeah, some people yeah. get spot radiation on their breasts to to stop that, but and you got to do it. You got to do it initially. You can't you can't wait and do it later on because once it gets rolling, um, and you know we all have different body chemistries. As I said, um, it affected me a little bit for sure. Um, so how, guess, how would you? Who would get that? Would you, would you go through your? Um... I would, Your I would talk oncologist? to the, yeah, I would talk to the oncologist, have a frank talk with her and 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 say say you're concerned about this. If if uh, you've heard that uh it can have a a detrimental effect, you know, physic physiologically on your on your body. Mm -hmm. right. There is a drug that you can take, but they usually recommend radiation. I think it's usually just one shot, right, Peter? I don't know. I didn't get it for unfortunately. I never did either, but really? I, I, this group wasn't around for me at that time. I wish somebody had told me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she said to me, you know, it could make your nipples sore. And, uh, you know, th that's all she mentioned. Uh, you know, she didn't say anything about enlargement. But um, I'll, that's another conversation I've got to have with her real soon before I start on it. Yes, I think you should. Yeah. Um, I, I, right. just wanted, I just want to jump in for a second. Um, I just saw that Sarah Pilcher arrived. Sarah, we would love to have you in the MS group. We'd yes. love to have you, but it doesn't start till um, 6, uh, 8.30 Eastern. I got you, so 7.30 Central here, okay. Yeah, we, <laughs> but we want you to come back. You did this to us 
two weeks ago, and then we never saw you in the MS group. And I said, that's Sarah Pilcher. She came into the wrong group. They said, you want to see her. Yes. Okay, I will log on at 7.30. Exactly the same way at 7.30 Central, okay? Okay. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, that, that's my update. Good. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay. Thank we're you. Gonna move, we're going to move to Ravi now, but I want uh, Paul, Frida, Sylvester, Frank, uh, Favish to know that uh, I haven't, I see you there and I haven't forgotten you and, and, Dave, and Dave and Deb. So um, Ravi, why don't you give us an update? Yeah. So uh, I have a question. So I'm going to go up. My update is that I'm going to start radiation in about a week or so. Um, I'm getting the uh, gold, uh, whatever they call it, installed in my prostate. Um, I, so I have two questions. Um, I've been on Eligard and bicalutamide now for about 40 days. Um, for about three weeks now, um, and it's all going fine. Um, the question I have is about my urine. Um, for about three weeks, um, I'm finding that the smell of my urine has changed dramatically um, for the better. <laughs> it, it's it's smelling good. It's uh, I'm getting a <laughs> I'm getting this fruity uh, come sort of a spicy smell to it, uh, and it's consistent. It's consistent, and I, you know maybe I'm dreaming it, but I'm I'm uh, I'm so, I sometimes get the smell even otherwise. So. Perhaps it's uh, coming out of my skin too. Um, so, do have any of you experienced this? Uh, I mean, do you know are what you, it may be due to? Are you eating asparagus? <laughs> well, I do eat asparagus sometimes, but but this is consistent. It's not like it's not like it appears. <laughs> you guys are having fun at my expense. Well, no, no, that's that's how our call started when three or four of us gathered about 10 minutes of pat martin was talking about asparagus and how it changes your urine yeah that that's all that's uh, asparagus is well known of course but this is very consistent it's it regardless of what i eat um <clears throat> and I, i'm wondering if it is due to the cancer or if it's oh, due to it has what about urinary frequency um so um, urinary frequency has not increased. I'm, I'm, I'm taking tamsulosin because my urinary frequency mm -hmm. had increased, and that's helped quite a bit. I don't know, Robbie. I, I was on bicalutamide for about a year, and I don't remember making my urine smell better. Um, you, have you been checked for diabetes? Because well, that's what I was going to say. Diabetes. diabetes. I had I had the fruity smell associated with diabetes. Oh, is yes. that right? I see. Yes. Have you been checked for that, Robbie? Um, yeah, I I did. I I got my blood tested in uh, end of November, um, so maybe maybe I should go get that tested again. So here's, here's what it could be, Ravi, and I think I think these guys are spot on because it didn't occur to me. But um, the LHRH is going to change a lot of your metabolic function. Mm -hmm. It changes it differently for each man. But part of that metabolic function is it can often result in a significant increase in your glucose. I see. I see. And so it may be that your body is now um, producing a lot of glucose and that... Um, you need to check and see have them have them uh, measure your serum glucose now what they do about it whilst you're on um whilst you're on lhrh i don't know i mean one thing one could do and which is very controversial is one, one could add metformin to your um to your regimen yeah. um which some think helps uh control prostate cancer whether or not you have high glucose others do not but there are, there are things we can definitely do, but these guys are right on it. Um, check, check that glucose level. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the other two questions I have is... Um, you need to get either an A1C test or okay. a fasting blood sugar. Those are yeah. the ones 
that tell you whether or not you have a diabetic problem. The A1C gives you a three-month average. If it's over 5.6, you're pre-diabetic. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so another quick, very quick question. Um, so it just occurred to me as I was biking the other day, um, is should I be concerned about, uh, you know, so when you're sitting on a bike and, and you're leaning, uh, you're leaning um, forward, should I be concerned about the pressure I'm exerting on my prostate there? Only if you're going to have a PSA test. Oh, I see, I see. But so, so, so even so, the, I mean, I was thinking that this is this is advanced, and the, and one of the doctor's reports was that this the the cancer is um, um, gone out of the prostate capsule. Um, so am I by squeezing it? <laughs> am I? Am I? I don't think no. there's any okay. evidence to say that. I see. Okay, thank you. Um, and finally. Um, you guys were talking about uh, testosterone levels varying enormously, right, uh, through the day. So then, what's the, what's the best time to test it? I mean, is there is there a particular time? Supposedly higher in the morning, fasting. <laughs> Supposedly. I see. So, oh, it's higher when you're fasting. Okay. So the higher so, in the morning. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The important thing, I think, is to do, make sure you do it at about the same time each time you get it tested. Okay. You know, okay. And by the same lab each time. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all. Yeah. Which you, uh, Ravi, let us know what about that glucose, will you? Okay. Oh, yeah, I will. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. But I'm enjoying the good smell right now. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You're going to, when it doesn't smell so good, you're going to come back and say, you know, you guys ruined my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dave, David, David Debbie. You had yes. something you said. You still with us? Yes. I have a question. Go ahead. Does anyone know about neuropathy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Yep. Okay. Causes hands, or, of, hands, or, hands or feet? What was that word? Hands or feet or both? Oh, it's it's my legs. Uh huh. So what? I well, I forgot. What is your current therapy? Uh, I, my current therapy. I'm I'm. On, I see I'm finished with my chemo. I'm, I, that, that's a little strong. I'm on a holiday from my chemo. I, I had nine, and the doctor's giving me a holiday right now. So the chemo was taxol? Was what? I'm sorry, you don't know that word. Was do, dose of taxol? I believe so, yes. So that is a major yeah. provoker cause for peripheral neuropathy. And so even though you might have had, it, it could develop even after you finish the chemo as a delayed effect. So I got, I got, that I got another. That, that I have clearly, another, I have another, I'm that, sorry. That's sort of the most parsimonious explanation. I have another question, the same related. I'm taking Erlita pills. I've also heard that can cause this rash, red rash. It's, it's not so the much rash is either. Uh, I, I may be apalutamide or Alida does cause a rash. I haven't heard about it, but the the if you're taking uh, Lupron, LHRH, Eligard, Lupron, any of those, um, that can cause neuropathy. It doesn't happen that often, but it happens, and I'm I'm an example of it. So the combination hmm. of hormone therapy plus um, the docetaxel is quite likely to result in neuropathy. And you know what 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 Debbie described to me, and I know you did say you thought you had sort of a skin rash, but it's really more of this burning sensation. And it's yeah. that burning sensation that made me think 
that it was neuro neuropathy and uh, why I asked you to raise it, because as the guys on here will tell you, um, neuropathy manifests in a lot of different ways. Right. It can feel like it can feel like you there's something on fire, but you can't see it. It can feel like somebody's sticking a needle in you. This week for me, or last week for about 10 days, I felt like I was treading on a stone all the time. I had a little pebble, but there was nothing there. Then it dawned on me, oh, you know, this is this is a neuropathic response again. So um, very likely what you are dealing with is some type of neuropathy, um, especially if you cannot see anything in the skin that looks normal. There are a number of uh, pharmaceutical um, solutions. The most popular is a drug called uh, gabapentin or neurontin, but there are also some, as your wife will favor, there are some, some homeopathic solutions too. Um, and I actually, I completely forgot I had it. I've got, a, uh, I've got an essential oil that is supposed to be good right here for neuropathy. And when I told my friend, uh, she said, didn't I give you an essential? Oh, I said, yes, you did, but I forgot I had it and I didn't use it. So now I'm waiting for that pebble to come back so I can <laughs> see if I can get it to move with this essential oil. But um, I think that's what, I'm again, not a doc, but my, what it, what I'm thinking is that you could have an issue there with a with the neuropathic response. It's really, really common from docetaxel, right, Herb? Absolutely, absolutely. And, it, and again, it manifests in many different ways because what you're doing is you're interfering with nervous system conduction. And so sometimes it's gonna be pain, sometimes it's gonna be a burning sensation, sometimes it could be itching. It, it, it's hard to predict but any of those effects are likely neuropathic. What, what about getting off Erlita? I, I don't um, know about that, but it, it doesn't go away fast. I, I've, I finished my chemotherapy last July and I still have it, but it's, for me, it's more of an irritation. And I, and I found a good acu, acupuncturist was really helpful. Uh, I, I, I called it, them this morning, yes. It, it cut mine. It cut mine by two thirds, probably. So now it's okay. just an annoyance rather than a, you know, some miserable thing. Okay. And, and Dave, Dave, my gut says that if your docs want you on a leader, um, there's probably good reason, especially since you've taken a break from your chemo. And I, I don't think it's the Alida per se. I don't know, I don't know enough about it, but my guess is it's not the Alita per se. Okay. I think it's more likely to be um, right. the, a result from either the dose, from the dose attack, so. But, okay. Right. I mean, I've got a rash on, the, on my right foot that's sort of, I had, I stopped chemo over a year ago and it's the rash is still there. And it's not dermatological. It is neurological. Okay. Okay. David, my my yes. doctor uh, recommended that I try vitamin B six because I, I didn't have the, the tingling so much. I had the pain in my in my calves when I'd walk, and she said that was also neuropathy. As every as everybody's mentioned, there's different variations of neuropathy, but I tried uh, vitamin B six and it did seem to help a little bit. Okay. You can get that over the counter pretty, pretty much anywhere. Yeah, my, mine is an issue uh, sleeping because, uh, 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 yeah, and I, I, I wear gloves to bed because I, uh, sometimes I scratch in the middle of the night. I can make my legs bleed with scratching. Hmm. So I wear hmm. white gloves, and that, that, that stops me. I can scratch myself, but I don't even know it, <laughs> and it's not making any uh, indentation. The, the skin is like leather. Mm hmm yeah. yeah, David, I, I I had at one point during chemo and afterwards, I changed how I slept in my bed. Uh, instead of the headboard being for my head, I, I went down the other way and put my feet against the wall because uh, it gave me a great relief to be able to 
push on something, it helped my uh, my leg and feet neuropathy considerably. Okay, that that's my only issue. That's my only issue left. That's with great. my treatment. Good. Yeah. Okay, Paul, okay. Frieda, Sylvester, Frank, do any of you guys have something you want to contribute tonight or talk about or ask? I'm good tonight, thanks. Paul, Frieda, Hi, this is Sylvester. Nothing for me. I have a couple of short comments. Well, Sylvester, you go first. I don't usually have a comment. I usually listen. But one thing I will say, there are other people on these sessions who have had prostatectomies, but none of them that I have heard have discussed the issue of strictures. When I had my prostatectomy, I developed a second stricture, which I have to call, uh, I have to catheterize myself daily. Well, the catheter is, uh, in fact, I had another uh, procedure back in November, and the stricture seemed to be closing again. I went to my urologist yesterday, and there is a, he suggested I wait one month, and he will decide if the scar tissue should again be removed. And this will be the fourth time, <clears throat> excuse me, wow. in 20 years. I'm just curious to know if there are any other persons on the sessions who have developed strictures because of the, the prostatectomy. Hmm. I, I think, guess not. No, I think people have talked about it. Especially in our in our uh, low and intermediate group, it's come up once in a while. I've 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 heard of it where people have had to go back in, and um, and, and clean things out again a second or a third time. It's not it's not that uncommon. Um, I don't know if it's related to the expertise of the surgery or or whether it's your you know our own body. Uh, it hasn't happened with me, but it's but I know that it it's not. Totally unusual. Who, who who are you seeing as a urologist in San Francisco? Dr. Rector at St. Mary's okay. Medical Building in San Francisco. In fact, I've been going to him for about about twenty years now, maybe fifteen at least. Huh. Do you have you thought of getting a, like a second no, opinion from somebody in the area? I stand corrected. I stand correct. I've been going to him for about 25 years. I was going to him prior to uh, having the prostate cancer. No, I have not s s sought a second opinion. But prior to Dr. Rector, I was going to another doctor who retired. And I had been going to him for about 10 years for another stricture. The second stricture developed at the bladder opening when they, when I had the prostatectomy, it's my understanding, the bladder had to be uh, 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 attached to the urethra. So the urine, the scream is still good, but like I say, the urologist had suggested I catheterize myself daily. And for several years it did work, but it seemed now that with time, it's not working as, as it used to. And I know the procedure is only temporary. You know, Sylvester. But that's about Sylvester, I think that, you know, many of us would would like you to consider getting a second opinion as to how to treat this, um, probably from UCSF. And, um, and we have good enough contacts at UCSF 
that we can get you, uh, we can make sure you get to the right doctor, Peter Carroll or Matt Cooperberg or, or one of those guys. Um, and um, if you would be willing to consider that second opinion, reach out to, to us and, and we'll see what we can do to make it happen. Sure, I'll, 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 I don't have to consider that. I will get a second opinion. I don't mind that at all. And I'll send you an email and perhaps maybe you can provide me with some of the names at UCSF. Yeah, copy, send it to me and, and copy Joe Gallo. And between us, we'll see if we can either get um, Peter, Peter Carroll to, to, to visit with you or whoever he recommends, who he likes. There's um, uh, Max Meng is really good in that area at UCSF. We, we don't talk about him a lot, but I had a consult with him. He's a very nice guy. Peter is fantastic. Um, Matt is great, but send it to both of us and, and, um, and, we'll, um, and we'll help you. Yeah, I would I would echo Thank you so I would echo those those words. You want you want it's the doc you want the right doctor. Cause um I I was recommended to a, a lower down guy at UCSF once because all doctors don't shine at UCSF. And that and, and that guy tried to convince me I had bladder cancer. So I was out of there fast. So you know, there are some excellent urologists at UCSF and, th and that's where you want to see. Thank you, I certainly will. Frank, Frank Favish. Quick, uh, quick update. I uh, finished my chemo, um, my sixth treatment, and just over the last week, the side effects have, begin, have begun to ease off and part of my taste has begun to return, um, which is which is very welcome. Uh, I had I had I had my um, scans today. Spent six hours at the James and had my nuclear bone scan and two CT scans. I've received one result back on the bone scans and they didn't reveal any lesions or any mets in, in the bones. I haven't, wow. received, yeah, which is great news. Um, I haven't received anything yet back from the CT scans and the nodules on the lungs. Um, but those are the first result was very welcome, and I was very pleased with that. Uh, next week on Tuesday, I go in to my um, oncologist, and we will review the results and what will be the next steps in the treatment. Wow, I mean, that's really great, Frank. So, so, um, and and remind us what, what there were. There were um, spots before you started, correct? Yes, uh, from the Oxman PET scan that identified them in August, uh, there were three uh, three nodules, uh, all about one centimeter in size. Uh, before I started the chemo in January, I had a second set of CT scans. And, uh, and they showed there was no change in the nodules. And then we went ahead with the chemo in January. Uh, so waiting for those results. But uh, uh, next week, they'll do another blood workup with uh, PSA and testosterone. Uh, and then uh, a full-blown meeting with the uh, oncologist. OK. So did, did you have any, I, I know you had the lung nodules before, and you're going to have to wait for the CT on that one. Did you have anything show up on the bone before? No. 
Okay, so no, the, it didn't, was, didn't have any, but it also showed there wasn't any further metastasis uh, from the nodules uh, to the bones. Okay, so um, okay, so basically, I guess what we're what we're hearing is that nothing's changed in the bones. And we're waiting for the CT scan to see if those lung nodules shrunk. Is that right? Correct. That's the uh, that's the big question. And then, based upon that, uh, what will be uh, my oncologist marching orders uh, for further treatment after uh, after we see those results? Well, don't make it. Don't make us wait a whole week. You send us an email so I can tell the, my guys how if if those if those nodules have gone, I want to hear about it. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, uh, I'm certain uh, it, uh, that that'll be a, a very happy time. Um, but again, I I, I can't uh, I can't offer any opinions until we see the results. Okay. I just, uh, excuse me one second, guys. Myrna, this is still the prostate cancer meeting. Your MS meeting will start in half an hour at 8.30. Just wanted to let you know, okay? Come back exactly the same way at 8.30 and you, unless of course you have somebody in your family that you're taking care of with prostate cancer, you're welcome to stay. Otherwise, come on back at 8.30, and that's when we'll have our MS meeting, okay? There you go. <laughs> and, and also, on another happy note, uh, I'm growing a little bit of peach fuzz, and the hair is returning. Okay. Listen, take a look at our poster boy here. Yeah. One good look at our poster <laughs> boy here. And look at all that hair that he's got. He, you know, he's going to be, he's very fortunate because when he got to Colorado today, he said it was snowing and all that hair is keeping him warm. Isn't that right? <laughs> it, it, it is. It is. <laughs> that, that was, I, I told Gail, my wife, that's my biggest fear is my hair is going to come back curly and red. <laughs> I don't think Albert Einstein ever went through chemotherapy. No, but when mine came back, it came back curly, and it was I liked it, and then it came back, and then it keep kept going and straightened out. So for a while, I had Jewish curly hair, which was great. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 all very strange. I have long hair now on my arms and no hair on my legs. I can't figure it out. It's, it's all a mystery to me. If you're lucky, you'll come back looking like Peter, but you might end up coming back like me. It's, it's so, yeah. not Oops, so good. Um, okay, Carlos, I think you forgot that the meeting started two hours earlier. Um, but it's good to see you. Has, um, it, has, has anybody else? Anybody else? I think I've caught everybody, but does anybody else have anything? Russ, Carlos, Russ, I haven't talked to you in, in uh Yeah, I can give months. I can give a quick update. Do it quickly. And, yeah, just quickly. Um I met with uh uh went to Dana Farber Boston today, um more related to my kidney. Um and uh Dr. Chang, who's a kidney expert. Uh, we've decided to stay on active surveillance for another uh, another year. My other urologist who did my prostate surgery uh, wanted to go ahead and do surgery sometime in the next couple of months. So that's why I got a second opinion. I'm sticking with Dr. Chang down in uh, Boston. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to bring up is I was put on testosterone patches uh, two weeks ago. And it's kind of a con you know, controversial, uh, you know, treatment post surgery, radiation, and ADT. But my testosterone level was very, very low, and that's why I, you know, lacking energy and 
all the other good things that come with it. Um, at, so I don't know if anyone else has had testosterone post treatments, but uh, uh, I talked to, to Chang today about that and he said, you know, there's no medical evidence that, um, you know, taking testosterone will do anything to promote the return of prostate cancer as long as you're keeping a PSA level, um, you know, getting checked every three months like I am. So that's just the two quick updates. Is Chang a urologist or is he a GU medong? He is a urologist that was referred. Uh, Dr. Roberts is my medical oncologist at Dana-Farber. And he referred me to uh, Dr. Chang, who's one of the top uh, kidney guys in the Northeast. As a uro but he's a urologist, right? He's a urologist and surgeon, yeah. Right, now I'll come back, I'll come back to the T, but Joan, your name came up earlier. Uh, in a conversation with Joe Merger, would you recommend Dr. Roberts? Russ, would you recommend oh, Dr. Roberts? I thought, I thought you were asking someone else. Dr. Roberts uh, is very competent. He comes highly recommended. He is, I forgot the, the his boss's name is the big uh, guy. Yes, I couldn't. He wasn't taking new patients when I needed one. And so I was referred to Roberts and I was very happy uh, with Roberts. Uh, and he's still my main uh, MO. And so, yeah, I like him. I would definitely refer. Okay, well, that's what, that's what we said. Um, I'm wondering if Joe has nodded off there. Can anyone else? Looks <laughs> like- Joe he might have just nodded off, so we're going to have to tell him to listen to the uh, the recording. But that's what we said, so that's okay. Um, you asked about the tea patches. I actually did um, some testosterone supplementation after I think about eighteen months, because my testosterone came back with a vengeance, and then it dropped right back down. And after it dropped down, I started supplementing for about 12 months and it didn't make any difference. So I quit. And then eventually it found its own level at around 500. Um, so, and I, I just don't know about the literature on whether testosterone supplementation impacts men with high risk prostate cancer. There's been a you know, lot of... Yeah. A lot of stuff written about it in the last couple of years. Um, so, it, like I say, it's controversial, but it seems to be the an upcoming trend. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to see if it. So far, it does seem to be helping, uh, especially with the fatigue, strength, uh, endurance. Uh, maybe it's in my head. Placebo effect. I don't know. I read an article about using it when abiraterone stops working. They've given testosterone to people and it seems to recharge abiraterone after a while. Uh, not familiar with the exact timing of it, but there are, was an article about it. Okay. Um, guys, before we all leave and before Herb goes off to eat, um, we, I just want to remind anybody, if anyone on this call, I won't ask for a show of hands, who has not yet filled out that survey, we really, really want you to fill out the survey, please. I'll put the, I'm going to put the, um, the uh, thing in the, uh, the, the link right now in the, in the window, um, because I am hoping that Herb and I will talk very soon and what we will then do is start to work on um uh analyzing get, and preparing right, get some analysis yeah and there's the there's the link now i just want to tell you and we're i really want to thank everybody we had a great response we got over 20 percent response which for a survey is is really really good and over 50% of the people opened our email. So that means that 
of the opened emails, um, we got about 40% response. So we've done really well. Herb's wife, who's a statistician at the NIH, tells us that we're in very good shape. So now we've got to see what you all said, which is largely, I think, an endorsement that you enjoy this experience and it's been helpful, but we will share it with you uh, once we get it. We're, we're going to be making two posters, one for AUA and, and one for ESMO. So thank you again for, for working with us on that. Yeah. Herb, any, do you want to say anything okay. about the survey? No, I think we thank you all for doing it. And hopefully we'll, we'll we'll have some nice feedback to work with. Okay, guys. So this was one of those rare meetings where we had nobody knew. So we had a chance to catch up with just about mm -hmm. everybody. I don't think, okay. uh, I don't think we left out anybody. We had one new lady, but we couldn't talk to her. So I'll have to send her a note. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It was refreshing. It's kind of it was kind of like the old days, like uh, you know, four or five years ago, when everybody kind of knew each other. And uh, yeah. so it's good. It's hey. good hanging out and uh, and getting a feel for where we are in our journey to uh, and support each other. Are we uh, I... completely out of time, Peter? No, go ahead. We're, we're, I I have to go to the bathroom real bad, but go ahead. <laughs> I um, um the gentleman's uh previous question on testosterone I I was going to ask my doctor before raising this to the group um but I've been on um Eligard and um Abidaterone for 6 months now um my PSA is way down and my primary physician, actually, not my oncologist, my primary said, well, we ought to know what your testosterone is. So they did my testosterone and I just got the results um, on Friday. And all my testosterone levels are normal. They're not, they're not low. They're all in the normal range. That seems very bizarre to me. Yeah. Is that? I'm now almost a year off ADT, and I was still right around 200. Um, you know, just even less than that was uh, like 135, which was extremely low. You're, you're talking total testosterone? Uh, yes, not free, total. So my total is seven six five. Yeah. Hey, and you're a stud, man. No, no bragging. <laughs> what did you say your PSA was? Let's see the pecs. Come on. It, what's, what's your PSA? No, it was undetectable the last time they tested it. That's you're great. No bragging. I, I think it's pretty scary. Shouldn't the testosterone be way down? Well, yes. Hold, hold on a minute. Let, let me just clarify. I, I know you were taking Lupron and Abby. Are you still taking Lupron and Abiraterone? Yes. Mm. Yeah, there's something not right there. I, I would be taught who prescribed the Lupron and the Abiraterone? Uh, Dr. Carducci at Sibley. Well, I would send a note to Dr. Carducci right away and tell him I'm on Lupron, I'm on Abiraterone. And, and when was this testosterone measure taken? Um, last week, I got the results. The results are dated May 3rd. Yeah, um, then you need to ask Dr. You need to you need to meet as soon as you can with Carducci. And so and, and so that we can figure out why the Lupron and the Abiraterone are not working for you. Yeah, right, right. And, that, and I would, I would put that as, a, as a priority, because there's definitely so. What was when was the last time you measured your Lupron, your uh, testosterone? Um, 
I think it was a few weeks before that, but something happened with that test result. I I never actually saw that test result. Well, here's what I would say, um, and it, it, it's it's happened to some of our guys before. They could have mixed up the tests. Uh, I would go back and I'd get another test right away. Who is it? A standing order that you have for your testosterone? No. So who orders the testosterone test? Carducci? Uh, he, he, he did, but then this last one was done at the order of my primary, who's okay, from so a different um, hospital, although I, I had the test done at Sibling. Okay, well, you, but, you, you go back to your primary and tell him you want to retest because it doesn't seem right that with on Lupron and Abiraterone that your testosterone is 750. Right. And you want to check that in case they got you something mixed up. Yeah. You, I, might, I, you, I, might have got it, you might have got it mixed up with Sylvester Stallone's test or something. I, I hope so. <laughs> I, I hope so, because I know that's not supposed to look yeah. like that. It's, I, and they should have caught that. The doctors should have caught that. You know, as soon as they got a result like that, they should have said something's up and contacted you. I mean, that's very strange that they didn't call you back for another test. Yeah, I, but I was thinking of going to Carducci, not my primary, and saying, how can this be with Lupron and Abadaterone? Well, yes. let, let, let's say this. You definitely, I, 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 would not, I would not go to Carducci until you've tested it again, because it may just be a, an aberration or an administrative mix-up. So yes, you're right to go to Carducci, but I think if it were me, I would want to make sure because it just doesn't sound right. Something's okay. wrong there. Right. Okay. And you Thank don't want to make you don't want to look like it's not you. It wouldn't be your fault, but for you to go to Carducci when it hasn't been checked a second time, you know, he he's probably going to say go check it a second time and then let's talk. Okay. Do, do, Dr. It, yeah. Carlos. Would you agree on that, or what? What would you say if somebody came back to you on Lupron and Abiraterone with a 750 testosterone? Your phone. I think your phone is muted right now. Gary, do you feel like you have a 700 testosterone, or are you dragging? I mean, what what do you feel like? I I don't feel like. I don't know if I ever had a 750 testosterone. Okay, well that's yeah, that's that's the telltale thing. I, I you, don't. If you had 700, you would know it. You yeah, can lift the car up. <laughs> I I don't think it's real. I don't think I don't know what to think. Okay. I I will I will get it retested. Good and let us know. And, and, okay. and if it retests at a high level, then definitely get on to Carducci right away. If it I, want to, I, want, I want to say enjoy it while it lasts. God, I dream of that day. Yeah, I don't think it's real, though, Larry. I, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> not, yeah, I, it's not having any effect below the belt. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be coming back to hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. guys, we got to get we got to get off. There's another meeting coming on our heels. So, thanks very much. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Good oh, hold on. Goodbye. Thank you. Best, somebody, best of luck. Somebody just arrived. A telephone caller. <laughs> oh, uh, a telephone caller just arrived. If you came in. For the MS meeting, please dial back. And Mary, please dial back in about five or five minutes. We're just closing out another meeting. <laughs>